One of the other interesting observations about customer development is this notion of the pivot. Pivot was a term that my best student ever, Eric Reese, coined when he noticed the arrow between customer invalidation and customer discovery, and he actually gave it a name, which I think is uh, in incredibly accurate. A pivot says, what do you do when your hypotheses don't meet reality? And this is such a neat observation about startups and why what we now know is much different than before. What we now know, instead of firing executives, when our business model doesn't match what's going on outside in the real world, we fire the model. And we simply say, hey, our hypotheses were wrong. So because we have been building the product iteratively and incrementally and keeping our burn rate incredibly low, a pivot is a substantive change to one or more of the business model components. It just simply says, hey, this isn't our customer segment. Our customer segment is really here. Or wait a minute, our revenue model shouldn't be freemium. We should be charging for it from day one. Or wait a minute, we've been using the wrong distribution channel. We need a direct sales force. Or gee, we have the wrong partners. By the way, an iteration is a minor change to one or more of the business model components. So for example, an iteration would be going from charging from you know, $9.99 to you know, $6.99. A pivot would be a change of, gee, our pricing is going from freemium to subscription. That's a substantive change. So the key idea here is a pivot allows you to get out and make changes. Remember, typically only the founders could do pivots, but is actually the heart of what makes customer development radically different than what's come before. The other thing to notice about pivots is that you want to keep them up at a constant speed and a constant tempo. And you want your entire company operating with speed and tempo and decision making just like a metronome. Right? It's constant, it's consistent, and it's relentless.